In December 1996, the Ottawa Business Journal published a front page article headlined, Tech Firms Tackle Skills Shortage. 25 years later, the main themes of that story still hold true in the eyes of many talent-hungry tech employers. But the growing acceptance of remote work is opening vast new talent pools for many businesses. For jobs that can be done remotely, there's growing interest among some local employers in hiring skilled workers who live outside the national capital region. But that raises a host of new recruitment questions, such as how you assess the skills and fit of a job applicant who you've never met in person. We'll be speaking to an entrepreneur who's taken a first step towards cracking that code this week on Techopia Live. Welcome to Techopia Live. I'm Peter Cavesi from the Ottawa Business Journal, and I'm joined today by Andre Bozut, the co-director of Decode, as well as Pierre Cote, a senior advisor in the People and Culture team at Stratford Group, which is one of the supporters of Techopia Live. Welcome to you both. Welcome. Thank hey, you. Peter. How's it going? Pierre, let's start with you. Briefly tell us about Stratford and how it works with local tech firms. For sure. I mean, uh, Peter, simply put, Stratford Group helps organizations and their leaders to grow, improve and transform. So essentially, we lean in and support organization with services in management consulting, intellectual property and people and culture. And we certainly pride ourselves on building a deep relationships with our client and becoming business partners with them to help them achieve the results and move their business agenda forward. So I know you've got a lot of uh, great expertise that I'm uh, really excited to uh, to tap into. Um, but first, I just want to chat a little bit uh, about a really exciting uh, event that happened uh, earlier uh, this uh, this spring. Andre, you and your partner organized a, a hackathon that uh, that had, interest, had an interesting uh, recruiting angle. You brought together some of uh, some really hot tech firms, uh, including from uh, from here in Ottawa, uh, Mitel, uh, Solus, and Foco, as well as some others from outside the region, and paired them with some uh, high caliber talent. Yeah. Just paint us a picture of about uh, what exactly uh, the uh, the event was and how it uh, unfolded. Yeah, so basically our thesis is really the best way to hire someone is to work with them beforehand, right? And that's how we operate. So I always kind of like using the analogy of imagine making your last hire, right? You send them, go through the interview process with them. Maybe you send them a take-home assignment. They perform the take-home assignment really well. But at the end of the day, you're kind of left wondering, how is this person actually going to perform on the job, right? How are they going to be able to work in a team? What's their actual work ethic like? There's a couple of things we've always kind of been evaluating. and We've kind of like had this personal pain point. Of, I used to organize this conference in, uh, in Ottawa called the Legacy Conference. And a question so many founders would ask was, like the founders are like FOCO, and I got a chance to chat with a lot of teams from like Solus and Mitel, was how do you hire great talent? And we really wanted to bring in a great way of doing it differently in a boring career fair or just a typical boost. We wanted to make it interactive and a fun way of doing it. And that's the way we kind of have it with Decode, where you actually get a chance to work with the talent firsthand right? And we just found the niche of June junior tech talent really interesting because at that stage of the talent's career, they're not really have a lot of experience on the resume. So you want to be able to filter for a lot of things. For example, we like to refer to it as like the on it factor. The on it factor is something you can't really measure in an interview. But once the problem arises in like the code base, is the engineer on it, right? Are they going to jump on it? When something pops up on the website, are they going to jump on it, right? You can't really measure that in an interview. It's hard to measure in a take home assignment. But actually working with them for two days, what we facilitate at Decode, and we did on March 4th and 5th, with companies like you mentioned, like Foco, Solus, Mitel. And we had some companies like Facebook and Google as well come in. So it's really interesting to see this wide variety of companies. You actually get to see the companies actually measure the talent and see how they actually work together. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. It was a really blast. We had over 1,000 applicants for that event and only 72 spots available. So it was a pretty competitive process. Um, and then from that, we basically um, we basically facilitated over 30 hires uh, over the past few years we've been doing it and hires being made right now as they're going through the final interview stages with a couple of the companies made there. 
So you know, I want to pick up on a, on a few things uh, that, yeah. uh, that 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 you raised there. But but first, you, you know, it's been my experience that um, some some employers, particularly in tech, have 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 used uh, hackathons in the past to, uh, to as, a, as a way of sort of sussing out uh, top uh, top talent. What have been some of the uh, traditional shortcomings of that traditional hackathon as a recruitment uh, tool model, and uh, and how did you work to overcome that? For sure. So like events or hackathons or whatever you call it, like Mark Andreessen, uh, um, the VC investor at Andreessen Horowitz has this really kind of like interesting phrase of like, what are nerds building on the weekends, right? And it refers to nerds, but it's like really techies, right? They're it's really kind of building the future and they're going to be building new types of products that are going to really pushing things forward. And when you see these hackathons, people aren't getting paid to go there. They're not really necessarily going there for the prize. They're literally just going for it to learn and build something. So that's really hackathon. So we found that really interesting. Thing was the typical hackathons though, you're seeing massive scale. So what we're doing is we're curating an experience and matching with specific companies based on their requirements. So you could go to a hackathon, it'll still be maybe a typical career fair. At the, that's how companies interact with the talent there. We wanted to change it and actually have them working together with the talent. And really where we had so many um, a thousand plus applicants just for 72 spots, these other events are really just optimizing for scale. We're optimizing for curating it, as I mentioned. And the last thing I like to mention is a bit different what we've seen from other hackathons who've gone to a few different companies, just the diversity present in our events. So we had 44% of our participants actually identifying as female. That's just not numbers you see at typical events like this, where it's just mostly male dominated, right? Um, and then secondly, what we really facilitate is being a virtual space. Um, where we, it's a remote, remote world today, right? You're hiring remote, you're not hiring locally anymore. So we really facilitate it and we kind of really optimize for Creating, um, creating this online space and online community where companies and students can interact via the events. Pierre, let's bring you into the conversation. Uh, we just heard about one uh, recruitment tool that uh, that some employers uh, are, are are using. Uh, you get to work with uh, many leading uh, leading employers uh, in, um, in in the region. How has the shift to remote work changed how they approach recruiting? Yeah, I mean, that has dramatically changed the shift. And if you look at it from an employer perspective, you know, one big criteria when organizations were looking for talent was location, right? Because people needed to be in the office. Now, if you exclude location, then companies are really focusing on the competency, knowledge, experience, and education, which kind of invertedly increases the quality of the candidate pool because you broaden the people that you can look at that can bring value to your organization. I've also seen a lot of advances with tools and technology, which really increases the fact or the competitiveness of organizations that could find candidates proactively sooner than their competitors, which again, really increases the, the, the competitiveness of organizations in finding top talent. Now, if you look at this from a candidate perspective, um, really what the interesting thing is, is that a lot of us have grown uh, quite favorable to working from home. It has its drawbacks, but a lot of us enjoy the fact that you don't need to commute back and forth to the office. Now, this actually, when I'm finding that candidates are looking at this from a competitive perspective, where actually applying to an organization that doesn't offer that flexibility of working from home, again, could be a deterrent from them applying to this job. Now, with tools and technology, I also found the trend that from a candidate perspective, they really have to be careful on their communication skills and pay special attention to keywords that they're putting into their CVs or to, into, or to their letters uh, to present themselves, because this will certainly drive the tools and technology to be able to find good candidates. Now, the other trend I'm also seeing is from an HR perspective. Now, this has dramatically changed how recruiters had to quickly adapt to remote interviewing and onboarding practices when the COVID-19 affected the workplace. You know, I find that, you know, HR practitioners pay a lot more attention to communication skills of candidates when they're interviewing, but as well as when they're pre-qualifying candidates, again, looking at those letters of uh, presentation as well as those CVs, and especially during virtual interviews, because you can't see the person, uh, sometimes body language is not as evident, but the communication skills really make a big difference in selecting top talent. And recruiters are now paying a lot more attention to that skill. Now, if you also look at some trends, I find that if organizations are able to leverage from the temporary and consulting workforce 
that has become a lot more prevalent in the marketplace. A lot of senior IT consultants have, you know, had great careers in a corporate world, but have transitioned to the consulting world. And this is a great source of IT skills and top talent for organization, especially when you're looking at finding hard to fill positions and talent to do that. So, and even from a business perspective, the investment is worth the return as organizations can save a lot of additional employee base costs. Andre Pierre was just mentioning there um, some uh, some of the uh, the, uh, the the issues surrounding sort of assessments and uh, skills assessment. Um, tell me a little bit about how that uh, played out at at Decode. How did the participating yeah. companies go about uh, assessing the uh, uh, the um, uh, the participants that they were paired up with? Yeah, so I kind of touched on it a bit a bit before, but like the typical interview process, right? There's only certain things you can measure, and just. For example, you take internships. Internships for junior talent before they graduate are a great opportunity to measure a lot of factors. Or someone's facilitating with these work trials is measuring a lot of those factors that don't get filtered out through interviews, right? So I kind of mentioned like teamwork, actual coding ability, right? So these are things, actual design. So we work with designers and engineers, uh, software engineers at these events. Uh, actual coding ability, actual communication skills, the ability to work under a deadline. Uh, work ethic and the on it factor. I think that's something you really kind of look for. Um, but really, like this is our 10th time doing this. We just hosted our 10th event in March. So we've seen like a wide variety and it's really interesting to see how different companies will value different things, right? But essentially it's the 10th time doing it. So what we've seen mostly is companies just getting a bit um, excited when at first they see the students a bit maybe nervous or the new talent, the junior talent a bit nervous. But as like in any interview, you'd be a bit nervous. But as you get a chance to work with them over the two days, you'll be able to assess them a lot better when they get more comfortable. And they're working on something they have fun with, right? So the town's really having fun working at this event. And just do, no one goes through an interview and be like, wow, I'd love to do that again like tomorrow, right? It just doesn't happen. So what we want to facilitate create that environment. And I just want to touch on something because I mentioned it before. So we've done over 31 hires on the spot at this point. Um, so we've had multiple more hires facilitated from our events just made down the line, but we've had companies make those hires on the spot. Yeah. Pierre, you know, um, I, th I think a lot of companies are excited by this opportunity about, uh, you know, finding great talent, uh, not being sort of, you know, always limited to, uh, to, uh, to the national capital region. But of course there's a flip side to that. If, uh, if a local employer can hire someone who lives outside Ottawa, that means that there's very little stopping a company based in, say, Vancouver or Winnipeg uh, coming in and uh, hiring some uh, some skilled talent uh, that lives uh, here in Ottawa. How can a local employer be, I guess, I don't want to say be on the defensive, but but help uh, make sure that uh, they're retaining their their top talent in the current environment? Yeah, thank you, Peter. That that question always makes me smile because, um, you know, I always say that an organization should flip the question from being a problem solution based to solution based, actually, and ask themselves, you know, why employees should stay in your organization versus looking at it being a problem. Because if you look at it from being a problem and retaining employees, it means it's probably too late. So, I mean, from when you take this into, uh, into considerations, I say that companies should look at ways to engage and retain employees and how or what their competitive ad advantage from a people and culture perspective is in relations to their market of, of reference. So if you look at it from a strategic perspective, organizations should be able to really do a deep dive into their employee value proposition meaning that they should identify what is expected from employees, managers, and leaders, and what can employees expect from the employer. And I certainly feel, and having done this many times, that doing this exercise, organizations will identify the specific value proposition and what elements help in engaging and retaining employees. And even if you take this exercise a bit further, um, you can design what we call a candidate value proposition. And this is where you position the organization and identify the elements or factors that make employers unique in their market of reference and how to position their value proposition to attract top talent. Now, if I go back to your question about how can tech companies or employers retain their top talent? Well, contradictory to a lot of beliefs, employers don't necessarily leave organizations because of compensation. In fact, if you look at the top reasons why employees leave, it's actually centered around the relationship with their boss, 
they're bored or unchallenged with the work itself. Um, their relationship with their coworkers is not good. They don't feel that their contribution to the work uh, or to the organization's business goal is connected. And a lot of autonomy and, it, and independence in the jobs that they do. So if you look at it purely from a relationship between the employee and the social and business interaction, it's evident that companies or especially managers have not adapted to promoting a social and business interaction and are actually pushing employees to feel less connected and, and engaged. So simply put, especially with COVID-19, where we're not socially interacting in an office setting, employees are left alone at home trying to figure out uh, what to do and how to do it. But the top job of a manager right now is to connect employees with the business, with what they need to do, and also providing feedback and praising them for the great work they do. Now, notwithstanding that, the social interaction has certainly been sacrificed with COVID-19 and working from home. So companies should really find ways in engaging and doing social interactions with their employees. And a good example would be at Stratford Group, my HR and people and culture team, what we do on Fridays is we all get together for an hour and we chit chat, we play games, we talk about our weekends, we you know make fun of other people sometimes, but it's a great way to connect our team together and feel engaged into what we do. So I would say notwithstanding the work is finding ways to socially interact and have that engagement with employees. That's great advice. Andre, we have time for one more question. Yeah, um, sure. We're coming off a, a, a great uh, spring event. Uh, what's next for the Decode team? What's on the horizon for you? Yeah, so me, me, and my, me and my partner, Sean, really realized that we just live in an amazing age right now with remote hiring, right? Um, and really, you can access talent. Companies can access talent from all over the world. It doesn't have to be in Ottawa. It doesn't have to be even in Canada at some points, right? Maybe there's some like legal issues. You want to make sure you have that set up properly. Uh, for hiring talent, but really it's just an amazing time right now in terms of bringing the right people onto your team. So we really want to facilitate and just keep on helping the companies we helped in uh, spring event um, moving forward. So I'm, I'm just going to give a quick shout out to them quickly. Just Mitel, Foco, Solus, Coho, One Password, uh, Facebook, Google, and Point Click Care. Maybe missing one there, but uh, really I just want to because they really believe in the vision that you have to provide a great experience to your candidates before you bring them onto your team, right? And I really believe those are the companies that are going to win. So really, our goal really is uh, to keep on moving forward and working with great companies that believe in that vision that you have to provide a great experience just for not only for your employees, but for candidates coming in, potentially evaluating, joining you, because it is just so competitive in today's world to find the right talent. The talent in, in, in remote hiring has just made it opportunity. So I like, I like when you're chatting before, I remember Peter, we mentioned this, Talent is spread evenly, but opportunity is not, right? So what is remote hiring? Remote hiring is basically opening the doors, right, for opportunity to be spread more evenly. So you don't have to necessarily be living in Ottawa to get access to the great companies that are in Ottawa, right? Or in the same in other cities around Canada. Um, so we really just want to work with great companies that really believe in that vision and that want to provide a great experience to filling their pipeline with great junior talent. And we're going to be doing a Canada event in September and we're going to do a U.S. event too, so we're just excited. Uh, just keep on working with great companies and help great talent find that company. As you mentioned, it is a fascinating time for uh, for yeah. the tech sector, both here in Ottawa and right across the uh, the country. And uh, it's really exciting to to have uh, both you, Andre, and and Pierre at the at the forefront uh, of that. So thank you so much for sharing uh, your insights uh, today. Thank you, thank you Peter. And before I leave, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, without whom this show would not be possible. We have Pearly Robertson, Hill & McDougall, a leader in business and tech law, TD Bank with specialized programs for tech firms, the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent, Number Crunch, offering virtualized CFO services for SaaS companies, and Stratford Group, providing services to help you scale your tech venture. Techopia is not just this great show, we're also available online with daily articles at obj.ca slash techopia. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Techopia OTT. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave us a comment. I'm Peter Cavessi from the Ottawa Business Journal, and we'll be back again soon with another episode of Techopia Live.